You can turn in your King James Bible to the book of Acts chapter 4. God's salvation isn't multiple choice. I need to make that point very clear because a lot of people seem to think that we each have our own way of getting to heaven and we can agree to disagree and whatever else. Uh, no, God's system of salvation, what he has written in the scriptures, is very plain and it's very narrow. That's why the devil's people come out and they'll call somebody like me narrow-minded. Well, in the sense of salvation, I am. Freely admit it, um, because that's what the Bible teaches. Let me show you. Acts chapter 4, beginning in verse 10. <clears throat> Here you have the disciples, Peter and things. He's preaching to the people there, the uh, lost Jewish uh, you know, Pharisees and Sadducees and things. Uh, Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Now look at verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. That's the way it is. And you can write in the comments and say, well, you know, I'm an atheist, I'm a Satanist, I'm a this, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a Hindu, I'm a Muslim, I'm whatever. And I just think that maybe you could get you to kind of compromise a little bit. You'll never get me to compromise because that's not the message of the New Testament. And you know what you're going to think about me? Verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Real Christian preachers look to the world like we're a bunch of unlearned and ignorant men. Oh, well, you should be a little bit more scholarly with it. And if you could show from the uh, ancient manuscripts and from the arguments and, and things like that, uh, if you could convince me that I'm wrong in my system, and uh, no, you're a dirty sinner. And the scriptures condemn you, and Jesus Christ is your only hope. Oh, oh, I find that offensive. Well, stay tuned because there's more coming. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Turn back towards the back part of your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 is back there. And if you don't understand what I'm doing here, I'm going through the scriptures. I'm not paging through my book of doctrines and commandments and uh, catechism and, and magisterium and all this other junk that like the Catholics do. Uh, no, we're going to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Beginning in verse 17. <clears throat> For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. You know, these, a lot of these preachers that are out there looking for your money, what they do is they preach such nice things and such good little speeches, Joe Osteen, your best life now, and all this other stuff. They make the cross of Christ of none effect. The cross of of Christ is a bloody, horrible thing. He had to die to pay for your sins and my sins. It's not something I can pretty up with wisdom of words and, and historical arguments. And in the, in the third century, and the, the council of, you know, what the scriptures say. Continuing, verse 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. If you use a new version, it says which are being saved because your new versions are of the devil. See, which are saved. I am saved. I can say that with full assurance. Well, nobody knows for sure if they're going to go to heaven when they die. You're lost and very ignorant of the scriptures. I can say completely, 100% sure that I'm going to go to heaven when I die. And I can tell people out there if they're going to go to heaven or if they're going to go to hell. You tell me according to you. Now, you could lie to me and I could get it wrong, but it's because of you lying to me. But if somebody comes along and they say, this is what I believe, I can say, okay, according to the scriptures, you're going to go to heaven. According to the scriptures, you're going to go to hell based on what you've told me. If you deceive me, that's not my problem. That's your problem. But see, we have a righteous standard right here. And the people that perish think it's foolish. So uh, if you don't want to look foolish, you should probably just not get saved. Not even claim to be a Christian. You have to get by that. Oh, what will people think about me? What will my friends and family think about me? <laughs> uh, this isn't for you, if that's the way you feel. Verse 19, For it is written, 
I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? God looks at all this, the great philosophers, Socrates, Plato, and this, you know, Aristotle and all this other stuff. He looks at all the Catholic popes and all the theologians, St. Thomas Aquinas and all these, and he just goes, foolish. They're just foolish. They're fools. If you don't rely on this book, if this book is not your final authority in all matters of faith and practice, then you're just a fool. You don't mean anything. The world will respect you because they say certain things that the world likes to hear. See, that's why the world, uh, they'll listen to them. But a foolish preacher like me comes along and I start to say the preaching of the cross. Oh, uh, uh, I don't want to hear that. Verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Um, you should find a place that preaches the word of God. Um, you say, well, I can go to church and, and find that. Uh, no, they don't really preach the Word of God at church buildings because church buildings aren't even in Scripture. Shock of all shocks. Uh, they're not. Get a King James Bible and read it for yourself. They didn't go to church. There's no such wording, go to church or going to church anywhere in the New Testament. The church is the people. It's not a building. Okay, where you go and you dress a special way on Sunday and then dress a different way on Monday. There's no Scripture for that. Okay? Um, so you say, well, where can I find preaching? Others, uh, it's getting harder to find out there. Well, I'll go to a seminary someplace, and that's where I can find the Lord. Um, no, because it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And that the wisdom of this world, they don't know God through that. Verse 22, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Things that don't make sense to you, it makes sense to God. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called. Uh, be careful looking for men that have high degrees and PhDs and reverend such and such and whatever else. Dangerous to go to those guys. Most of them are just lost heretics. I can say that from experience of dealing with these guys over the years. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. So that doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't God choose the very smartest men, the very most able scholars and, and the huge universities and seminaries? Why doesn't God choose that? Verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. I can say everything I have, everything I've ever preached has been from the Lord. You know, unless it's something I made a mistake on and whatever else, that's, you know, I'm not saying everything I've ever said is ex cathedra or something. Uh, no. There's times I make mistakes, but what I'm saying is any talent or any skill or whatever else that I have, I'll give God the credit for it and the glory for it. Why? Because I'm not supposed to glory in his presence. So if you're looking to find some guy that's highly qualified and just as his, his speeches, his orations are so beautiful that it just brings one to tears and whatever, well, then you're looking for somebody that's lost um, because the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. And I, you know, I get I get these people in the comments, and they'll say, "Well, you know, I I know that you're you know, you really do believe in what you're preaching." I do, and they say, "But uh, I just I wish I could understand a few things. I have a few arguments here that I'd like to you know whatever." Well, some questions are okay, but it just gets right down to the simple truth of the gospel. You're a sinner. Jesus had to come to the earth to die for sinners. Uh, put your faith in Him. Put your faith in this book. What this book says about Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, go down to the next chapter there, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 through 15. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 
But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. There again, I can judge things according to the Scriptures. You see? Because the Holy Spirit reveals these things to me. So somebody comes along and they say, well, you know, um, I believe Jesus. I believe in Jesus, you know. And I say, do you believe he died for your sins? Well, you know, that's your interpretation. Um, but I believe that I have to maintain good works in order to stay in a state of grace and whatever. And I say, uh-oh, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And I say, oh, I'm sorry, friend, I don't think you're saved. Well, who are you to judge me? Well, I have a spiritual standard. That's how I can judge you. Somebody comes along and they say, well, you know, I'm spiritual but not religious. I say, okay, what does that mean? Well, it means that, um, you know, I do believe that I have a relationship with Jesus, but I kind of get there through my, my meditation and I, you're going, on, going to hell. Sorry, you didn't make it. Well, you're judging me. Yes, I am, because the Bible says I'm supposed to. Right there. And I know that God's system of salvation is very narrow. Jesus Christ died on the cross. Where's the cross at in your life? Well, I have to take up the cross and I have to flagellate myself and, and I have to go to, to you know, auricular confession and I have to take the mass to continue to put down my flesh. And, uh, uh, wait, what did you say there? Auricular confession. Yeah, not in scripture. Um, mass, transubstantiation, Eucharist, sacrament. Catholic, not in scripture. Sorry, you didn't make it. I can judge all things. And I mean, again, okay, the road that takes you to heaven, the way of Jesus Christ is narrow, and few there be that find it. How does that work when you're part of a religion with over one billion followers? It's kind of a problem. The biggest religion in the world, and that's what Jesus Christ founded, is it? I mean, Jesus, narrow, few that be that find it. Catholicism, biggest religion in the world, over one billion members. There's a little contradiction there somewhere. I'll let you figure that out for yourself. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, go over to chapter 3 now, verse 18 through 21. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, look at this, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. You know, people that uh, are wise in their own eyes, they profess themselves to be wise, and actually they're fools, you know. They're very foolish with that. Um, God will actually take you in your own craftiness. Some guy's out there, you know, he's been to university for 10 or more years. You know, he's a PhD and he's a, all this other stuff, a tenured professor. And, you know, he's got all these titles and everything. And what's he doing? He's out in the dirt looking for bones to prove the Bible wrong. Yeah, my dog does that. He doesn't do it to prove the Bible wrong, but he looks for bones. Hey, I found a bone. Look at me. <laughs> you know, and he doesn't get grant money to do it. You know, the professors do. You know, look, I found a missing link. It's a bone. Wow. Amazing. Good job there, doctor. <laughs> and the, what's the Lord up there? The Lord says, oh, you probably should get some grant money and go out and look for more bones. Yes, I think I should. And I, I can go around to different universities and I can, I can talk about the bone that I found. And all the other dogs out there will go, really? Wow, that's a neat bone. Can we put it in the museum so all of us dogs can go look at the bones? Hey, hey, you know what? We found two bones and we made a whole skeleton out of it. And we know that that bone, it's a Tyrannosaurus Rex bone, and, and it would go or something when it, when it makes noises because we found a bone. And the Lord says, that's wonderful. Yeah, take the, taking the wise in their own craftiness. Keep it up. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, make a big museum there and things and museum of natural science and history. You know, good one. God's deceiving them. Well, I better go to the educated and the wise and things like that so I can see if I can find God through there. Uh, you probably don't want to do that. It's my advice. Verse 20, And again the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. 
Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Uh, don't glory in men. Go to John chapter 14. Two more places to turn to here in this little study. John chapter 14 and verse 6. John 14, verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Such a narrow statement. Uh, well, I think that we all have our way. I remember I used to go door to door, you know, back when I would waste my time on Saturday mornings when I was going to a Baptist church. If you ever want to waste your time, go out door to door, you know. Um, I, mean, I did it for years on end. I was a good Baptist, you know, going out <coughs> soul winning. And... Um, Never had anybody actually get saved, you know, because we were doing it the wrong way. I guess according to some of the guys, I should have had my little presentation more polished, you know. But uh, bore no fruit at all. Finally just said, you know what, this is really stupid. There's no scripture for this either. He that went souls as wise as Old Testament. It's talking about being friendly with people. It has nothing to do with the gospel, but done other studies on that. But we go out, you know, door to door and um, talk to these people and, and they would they just get so cocky and they'd say, Yeah, I have my ways. You know, I have my thing. You know, you guys do your thing and that's that's fine. I appreciate you. I respect what you're doing. But uh, I have kind of my little thing with God, you know, and I have my own way of getting to heaven. Uh, that's not what the Bible teaches. Well, you know, I think maybe if I can uh, just kind of do good works and follow the golden rule, you can't go wrong with the golden rule. Yes, you can. You're doing works to try to make it to heaven. Uh, Jesus didn't die on the cross so that you could go in another way and do your works to get to heaven. Finally, let's go to John chapter 3. Well, if there is a God and if there is a heaven, I think that we'll all get there eventually. Well, in one sense that is true. I will defend that statement. Um, you can actually read about in the book of Revelation chapter 20. Um, I saw a great white throne before whose face the heaven and the earth fled away, and there was no more sea, and the dead are raised up there, and they're standing there before the Lord, before they get their final judgment, and they're sent into the lake of fire. So in that sense, technically, yes, you'll be where God is at some point in time. You all do eventually get to the same place, but then you'll be leaving where God is. I'll be staying. I'll be up there on his right hand, over there on the right side with all the other saints. You can go. You don't have to go down to the lake of fire. You don't have to go to the great white throne judgment. You can be saved. John chapter 3, beginning in verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He prophesied. Did it happen? Yes, it did. Lifted up on the cross. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, one man, might be saved. There is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So, well, I'll put my faith in Muhammad. You're going to end up in hell with him. I'll put my faith in Buddha. He'll be my teacher. You know, give me, you know, uh, I'll attain samadhi or whatever the thing is. You're going to go to hell with them. Well, you know, uh, my, my God on earth is the Pope. <laughs> You're going to go to hell with them. All of them that have ever lived. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. You see, there's only two people in this world. Those that want the truth and they run to the truth and those that want darkness and cover up of their sins. They don't want to be judged. And they run away from this book. And from the truth that this book contains. 
See, that's just as simple as it is. I can complicate this thing and make it up, but I'm wasting your time. If you meet some preacher and he's trying to tell you all kinds of little philosophical arguments and whatever else, and, and there's evidence that demands a verdict and all this other stuff, uh, are you a sinner? Do you qualify for what this book says are sins? Oh, but I, I think that you should be a little bit more eloquent with the way that you say it. If you could just have some new arguments that would convince me that you're right in uh, the Bible is the standard. I can't pretty up the gospel. The gospel is a Jewish man, a homeless Jewish man came. He proved himself to be God according to the scriptures. The Jews of his day, the hierarchy, the religious hierarchy, they hated his guts just like they would do today. They still hate him today. The Jews of today, they still hate the name of Jesus Christ unless it's a saved Jew. But you go to the Sanhedrin and whatever else, they still despise Jesus. They still put him to death if he showed up again. Uh, only this time he's not coming back as the lamb, by the way. The second time he comes back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. They're going to, going to be running from him. But Jesus came, proved that he was God, claimed to be God over and over again. I've done plenty of studies on that. Claimed that he and the Father are one and the same being. I've proved that in multiple studies. Don't be lazy and waste my time and say, write it in the comments. I'm not writing it in the comments. Watch my videos. I show you the proof from the scriptures, the King James Bible. He came, he died on the cross, he shed his blood to wash away all of your sins. He was buried, and he didn't stay buried like Muhammad and all the popes and Buddha and Confucius and Socrates and Plato and Aristotle and all the other satanic people. Jesus came up from the dead, and he's ruling and reigning in heaven right now. And he has everything laid out in the future, and this book tells you all about it. You say, well, I don't, I, there's too many things I don't understand and whatever. I'm trying to find him in my wisdom. You don't find God in your wisdom. You don't look for God because of you have a, a hole up here in your intellect and you want to understand certain things and, and gain all this knowledge and whatever. No. Why well, I, I like to read C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis is in hell. I can tell you that. The guy said I, he was thinking he was going to go to purgatory. Ecumenical. One of his best friends was the occult uh, uh, John Ronald Rule Tolkien. You know, and I hear all these professing Christians. I love C.S. Lewis's writings. Guy was a military intelligence guy, asset. I have a whole study on that. He's a wicked, wicked man. You read some of the stuff that he actually wrote. He didn't believe the Bible. Oh, but he's a great hero in the Christian faith, and he had these great arguments. I thought the Bible said that you, you don't find God through the wisdom of this world. And all the great poetic writings and all the wonderful... That's not how you find God. You find God by some rough preacher out there. A guy that's preaching the gospel to you and saying, This is what the Bible says. You say, that sounds foolish to me. That's exactly what the Bible says. Congratulations, you got it right. And until you lower your stinking pride and come to the Lord and say, I believe what the book says. Until you do that, you're on your way to hell for all of eternity. And your damnation is just. That's just how simple it is. See, if I made it into some kind of a thing, if God, let me say it this way, if God made the gospel, salvation, into this really difficult thing, people would have a right. They'd, they'd be able to say, you know what? I can never attain to that. I can't go to the university for seven years and I have to go make a pilgrimage to the Vatican or some kind of thing. Yeah, a lot of people would say, I can't do that. That's not what God made. God made a system that is so simple that anybody can come along and they can understand it. Anybody can read this book and say, okay, I, can under I can't understand many parts of it, but you know what? The gospel is just as plain as day. I've messed up. I'm a sinner. I'm no good. He died on the cross to pay for my sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. According to the scriptures, you can't have salvation without a book that you believe is the perfect Word of God. It's simple. Anybody can get it. Anyone at all out there can understand what I'm saying. But most don't. Because they love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds are evil. So to all the Satanists and all the atheists out there and everything else, um, you know, I, don't, I know I'd have to hear some really good arguments and things. You're not going to get them. You're just not. You can look for them. 
But a lot of those uh, religious uh, great minds in Christianity that came out with these things and they have these great books and they've sold millions of copies and whatever, they're down in hell right now burning because they didn't actually believe in this book. Let me let you in a little, little dirty secret here about uh, Christianity. You want to hear what it is? The vast majority are lost. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of Christians out there hate this book. Did you know that? And they hate guys like me for preaching it. They said, guys, Denlinger's a fool. Don't listen to him. He's not orthodox. He's not a Trinitarian. He hates church buildings. He doesn't smile. <laughs> That's the reality. So, that's the way it is. Like it or leave it. Well, you know, I, I accept some of what you say, Brian, but uh, you know, I, I think Jesus is just maybe one of way. Sorry. He's the only way to heaven. So, that is going to be it. Um, again, I'll put some links to videos here at the end that you can watch about salvation, get you through some more scriptures and what I went through in this study. And um, just the way that it is. Uh, accept or reject, heaven or hell, God or the devil, black or white. Simple. See you in the next video.